My name is Uma Murthy. I'm going to share my long testimony, but in a very short manner, just in brief. Uh, I hail from Chennai. I was born and brought up in a very orthodox Hindu Brahmin family. And the way the Lord touched me was very different and very miraculous. I was born as the last daughter among the four daughters in my family. Least but not, the, uh, you know, the Lord chose me. I don't know why. I used to wonder, why Lord? Why me? Because all my other sisters are much more better. But the Lord said, I choose the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. It so happened, the best part is, we all studied in Christian convent schools right from our kindergarten. And I was surrounded with a lot of Christian friends who used to share the gospel to me every day, almost. And I just used to take it in this year and leave it off in the other year. Because I was such a stubborn Hindu. Like, you can never see my forehead without the vibhuti, kungumam, and saffron, etc., etc. Every day I used to go to those temples and worship those idols. I used to chant a lot of mantras and slokas. I used to say the Gayatri Mantram. I used to sing praises to all those idols. So I was such a stubborn person. I thought I was sinless. I was so pious. I thought I was so holy, actually. And it so happened in the year 1998 when I was doing my 12th grade. Uh, just for the fun part of it, I just went for an SU camp. The message actually fortunately touched me. It was a message shared by a sister from Isaiah chapter 45. She said, the Bible says that we cut wood from a tree. One part of the wood we make an idol and we worship it. And the other part of the wood, we just use it as firewood for cooking. We are actually worshipping the created object and not the creator. So if you have brains, think and see. She pointed out to me in front of the whole crowd among my friends. So I felt so bad that day. If you have brains, you can imagine, you know, somebody pointing out when you are a teenager. So that night, you know, I had a sleepless night. So out of a critical mind to just research and criticize, I just opened the Bible, started reading it. Because I've never understood all these things when my friends said, because no one can convert another person. Because nowadays, you know, they say Christians convert others, but it's not possible. I'm a proof for that. Amen. Because conversion doesn't happen by compulsion. It is a conviction of the heart. Amen. Right? So, uh, salvation is a Lord's. The Bible says that. So, it so happened, when I started reading the Bible, for the first time in my life, I got to know that idol worshipping was a sin. I've never known that. I, how can I create an object and ask the creator to come and sit into that? Such a big, great God who created me, who wants to carry me. Okay, I want to carry him now. How can I do that? Okay, for the first time in my life, I got to know that I was formed with sin in my mother's womb. Because I was so proud, I was sinless, I was pious and holy. And the second thing which really touched me was I can call this God as my own father. The God of the Bible is my father, my Appa, my Abba father. I had, I, when I was a Hindu, I used to call the names of a thousand gods, almost 33 crows gods I was worshipping. But no God did I have a personal relationship like how I have with my Jesus. I got to know only this Jesus wants me to have a personal relationship with me. No other God can do that. And above all, I had a surprising news that I can worship this God however I am, wherever I am, in whichever form I am, like whether I am clean or not physically. Because, you know, most of the times in Hinduism, when the women are unclean during certain days, they are not allowed into the holy sanctuaries, the temples, etc., etc. Even Islam follows that, I suppose. But it was real news, good news to me, that I can worship this God irrespective of my physical uncleanliness. I can just worship him anywhere, however I am. He sees only my heart, not my physical uncleanliness. And he doesn't expect my sacrifices because he has already sacrificed himself on the cross of Calvary. I needn't climb the Himalayas. I needn't get myself dipped into the Ganges. I needn't go to the Sabarimalaya and do all those sacrifices for him. Because he is sacrificed for my sins. He carries me. I need not carry him. So on that day, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And the Lord spoke to me from 2 Corinthians 5.17. 
that if any of you is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and everything has become new. So that day when the Lord spoke to me, I'm again stressing this, nobody told me to do, take baptism. The Lord spoke to me to take baptism from 2 Corinthians 5.17. That day I got baptized as well as with the Holy Spirit. And the journey wasn't that good. You know, the Christian path is such a narrow, tough path. Of course, a lot of persecutions, a lot of tribulations, a lot of cries. You know, most of the days, my restrooms were my prayer rooms. It was so tough, the journey. Again, long story made short. But finally, you know, the Lord was going, carrying me and he guided me in my profession, in my education. He made me a lecturer and everything. And the, my, my parents were seeing this and slowly they accepted the Lord and they started praying for my marriage and I was so stubborn I will get married only to a born again believer and according to my parents wish to get me married to a Brahmin convert according to their heart's desires the Lord fulfilled their heart's desires too and God has given me a good husband good children he's given me everything of course there is problem this side and that side and everywhere but you know the Lord is holding me He's guiding me. He's besides me. Okay? I can never be put to shame anywhere because wherever I was put to shame, he honored me. He, he's never let me down anywhere. He's been so faithful, so good. A God of faithful promises he is. As for me and my household, we will worship the Lord. Amen. All glory to Jesus.